So, we roll on to West Ham United tomorrow night, Wednesday night, at the Olympic Stadium. Now, they're fresh off at the back of beating Chelsea at the weekend. They're going to be full of confidence going into this game. We, on the other hand, we stuttered our way through a game that we should have lost, but we scrambled a last-minute equaliser, again with a Giroud goal. Um, now, I've seen a lot of Arsenal fans on social media saying that this is going to be a tough game, we're going to be right up against it, blah de blah de blah I don't see it like that. And the reason I don't see it like that is for this reason. When a lesser team, i.e. not a top six team, plays back-to-back -back games against a top six team, back-to-back, -back, so two top six teams, normally, in the second game, they get battered. Nine times out of ten, they lose. If, especially if they've won that first game. Now, West Ham did do that against Chelsea. They put a lot of hard work into that game and they were camped in their half for a lot of that second half. Now, I see it as we're going to go there. I'm not saying we're going to batter them and no disrespect to West Ham. I quite rate West Ham as a football club. Um, their fans have always been sweet. Every West Ham fan I've met has been sound as a pound, so fair play to them. But I do think we are going to comfortably win this football match. Um, I'm going to go into my 1-11 to for this game and a few of you are going to be like, whoa, really? But this is what I would pick for this game. I've had enough of half assed pricks in the team. I've had enough of piss poor performances and people getting in based on their name. Now, my goalkeeper for this game is going to be Petr Cech. Um, end of story. That's it. Left back, left wing back, should we say. Um, I'm actually going to go with a three at the back still. Um, which might surprise a few people, but I am going to stick with that. And I am going to go with Kalasanak. Kalasanak has been garbage. Yeah, you heard me right. Garbage for the last three or four games. But it is his first season here, and he has been one of our better players over the course of the whole season. So he stays in my team. Right wing back. Tata Hector. You can have a weekend off. Go and get your, not a weekend, midweek off. You can go and get your hair cut, bruv. Um, all this modelling on Instagram and we need to dig in tweets and uh, blah, blah. Fuck off, mate. We've heard it all before. Stop talking. Start doing. So I'm going with Debucci. Yep. Matthew Debucci is going at right wing back for me. Now, the three at the back. I'm going to go with Koscielny, um, purely based on the fact that we ain't really got a lot else. So I'm going to go with Koscielny, Monreal and Callum Chambers. Monreal has been our best player this season, in my opinion. He's been a, probably our best player for the last 12 months. Um, very underrated player. Doesn't get all the credit that an Ozil or a Lacazette or a Sanchez gets because he isn't the superstar name that costs the big dollar. But he is the most consistent player in our team. Week in, week out, he will put in a 7 out of 10. Um, yes, I know he's been at fault for a few goals here and there over the season, but so is the whole team. So, that's my defence. Now on to midfield. Aaron Ramsey's out for this game, and to say I'm gutted is maybe a little bit of an understatement. And I don't rate Ramsey, never have, don't think I ever will, but he has been fantastic this season, and that will be a big miss for us. I'm not sure how long he's out for, but it is going to be a miss. But... With that being said, here's my midfield. Granit Xhaka, Tata, you can go and help Bellerin get his hair cut because you ain't getting in my team this week. You've been absolutely piss poor and I've had enough of it now. What do you actually contribute to this team? Because you can't defend, you can't tackle. When there's a team that just sit and park the bus, all you actually do is go sideways. So all these 50-yard passes, they don't really come off against a team that sit deep. So... You're irrelevant, mate. You're out my team. I'm putting El Nenny there. El Nenny is a proper defensive, box-to-box -box stroke defensive midfielder. Um, I think he's a really underrated player. And majority of the time he plays, which isn't week after week after week, it's 
sporadically here and there, I think he does really well. And I think he knows his capabilities. He's a player that will get the ball and he will just pass it to someone better. But he offers up something that Granit Xhaka doesn't, and that is a bit of physicality and a good tackle. So El Nenny's starting for me. Next to El Nenny, I am going with Jack Wilshere. This geezer's been banging on the door for weeks and weeks and weeks, and all I keep hearing is, oh yeah, but, you know, he ain't going to get in our Premier League team. Well, our Premier League team ain't all fucking that, is it? Yeah? The Europa League team, yeah, is apparently the second string. Well, I'm sorry, but have a look at the first string. We've lost five games this season. So, sorry, I don't cut all this fucking bullshit about, oh, he can't get in here and he... Jack Wilshere has been fit all season. Jack Wilshere has played very well in every single game he's played this season. I'd say arguably the worst game he played was Belgrade away. But even then, he was our best player. Um, when he came on a weekend against uh, Southampton, if you notice, he actually started taking people on and driving at the defence. And it started getting their players out of position and opened up a few little chances. That is what I want to see from this guy. And I want him in the starting eleven. So, yep. He gets the nod. Now, the two behind the striker. I fought long and hard over this one. Um, and credit where it's due for Mesut Ozil. He has been playing half decent this season. Um, there's a lot more players in that 11 or in the squad in total that have played a lot worse than him this season. Yes, he's had games where he's just disappeared. But he will do. Um, but overall, his tracking back and his work rate has upped this season. Now, whether that's because he's playing for a move or whether he knows he's got a new contract sorted out, I don't know. Personally, I think he's off. And I think his PR team is on point and he's going to walk out a hero whilst leaving for nothing. The complete opposite to Alexis Sanchez, who's going to leave a villain whilst doing exactly the same. That sums up our fan base. But that's for another video. So I am going to go with Mesut Ozil. He's going to play there just behind the striker, and next to him, I love Sanchez to pieces. I think he's been fantastic, and the day he leaves this football club, I will give him a standing ovation, because he has been an absolute joy to watch. And I'm fed up of people scapegoating him because he's played shit all season. Well, I'm sorry, he should have moved in the summer. I don't care whether it was Man City and a direct rival, let's get it right. We ain't rivals to Man City and vice versa. Yeah, they are light years ahead of us. So, I think he should have gone in the summer, but he didn't. And now he is being vilified and picked on because he's playing shit. Well, I'm sorry, that buck lies with Arsene Wenger, the manager of the club. Because Arsene Wenger refused to sell him and refuses to fucking drop him. So, the buck stops with Wenger on that one. He should be dropping Alexis Sanchez from the squad. Maybe not the whole squad but definitely the starting 11, because he has been piss poor. But for our fan base to totally turn on this guy after he's been brilliant for three years is just a piss take. And that sums up modern football fans and especially modern Arsenal fans. They just switch on a player, bang, there you go, fuck the three years, he wants to leave, he's, he's a snake. Well, I'm sorry, to me he ain't a snake. I think he's been sold dreams by the manager and the club. He brought into them dreams. He played his ass off for three years. Them dreams didn't come true because we all fucking knew they were just dreams. But he didn't. He was sucked in. And he deserves to leave. Now, we've rejected 60 million quid from City for him. That's our loss. But now he's staying and he's temper tantruming. Now that's a problem. So if I was Wenger, I'd drop him, which is what I am doing. He is not starting this game. I am putting a Wobi in his place. Now, people are going to laugh at him and go, oh, a Wobi this, a Wobi that. Couldn't care less. One thing a Wobi will give you is work rate and effort. Now, Alexi Sanchez has done nothing for weeks apart from keep giving the ball away. Yes, I know he got an assist um, for the Giroud goal at the weekend, but that was literally all he done in that game. A Wobi deserves a chance. And in front of him, I'm going with Alexander Lacazette. I feel so sorry for this guy. I think he's been blinding since he joined us. And the amount of times I've watched him live and seen the runs he makes, and nobody passes the ball to him. So it must be disheartening as the lone striker to keep running in behind and running off the uh, defenders 
and not getting the ball. But it is what it is and we move on to this game. Um, like I said at the earlier part of this video, I think West Ham, this is one step too far for them after beating Chelsea. They put a lot of effort in. But at the same time, they have been boosted by David Moyes becoming their manager and they do look more solid. So we are in for a tough game, not as tough as some are predicting. So with that being said, my score prediction for this game is West Ham United 1, Arsenal 2. And I'm going with Lacazette with both goals. Anyway, subscribe, like, share. I'm out of here, peeps. Laters.